All right, so this video is going to be um, about power series um, and the interval of convergence. So we kind of looked at um, this new type of series that we're going to see yesterday where we were looking at polynomials um, with the Taylor and McLaurin polynomials, but you could kind of see how they might be a series because you were like repetitively adding something together, and that's what the definition of a series is. So we're going to look more at this today and we're specifically looking at what we call a power series because it's going to be something to the nth power. So you'll notice between yesterday and today if we're talking about those polynomials um, as a series that you have like something in front of and you have two variables. You have an x, that's the part of it that's the polynomial, um, but then you also have an n for the nth term. So the first term in the series, or I guess that's zero, first term in the series, second term in the series, third term in the series, um, et cetera. So that's kind of what differentiates this unit, I guess, from the last unit, is that now um, not only are we talking about individual terms that add up to be in a series, but we're getting a little bit more complicated because our series can be represented as a polynomial. And so we want to learn different things about that polynomial. So when you look here, um, the idea of the series or the polynomial being centered at C, we kind of saw that yesterday um, in the Taylor series, uh, the way that they phrased some of the questions, they would um, either say that the, that the original function that you were looking at and defining by a different polynomial that it was centered at C. So in the Taylor series, you might have seen some problems that had x minus one or x minus two in them. Um, in the Maclaurin series, they were always centered at zero, so you never saw a C value, it was always just plain old X. Um, so we're going to be looking for that center today. And that center today is going to help us to figure out um, what the interval of convergence is. So we have three different situations, and it won't make a lot of sense necessarily when I'm talking about it right now, but it will make more sense when we start to look at examples. So the first situation is that um, the series itself, when you, when you evaluate the series, it appears that the, that the series um, diverges. And so we would say that it only converges in one spot and that's at the center. That's like the only place where you can see what, the, what it would converge to. And then the rest of the time you would say it, it diverges. And I went ahead and highlighted this because even if the entire series diverges, you would still say that the power series converges at its center. So the rest of it might diverge, but it's going to converge at that one spot. Uh, another situation could be when you're evaluating the series and you find that it converges absolutely, then you would say it converges for all x's in the domain. And then the last situation is maybe it converges, but only for um, a specific interval. And we're going to look at how to do that. All right, so this again, it will make more sense when we start to move on from this. So I borrowed these notes from another teacher. I did not get to retype them for you. That means that um, these notes definitely, there's not much space to write here. So I'm gonna go ahead and write the notes on a separate sheet of paper. Um, one thing that you'll wanna keep in mind is that we typically um, will use the ratio test when we're testing for the convergence and to find our interval, but sometimes we'll use other tests. And that in the situation where we do have um, an interval with specific numbers, we are going to have to test the endpoints to see if they should be included or not. And again, I'll give you some examples of that so it will make sense. All right, so for the first example, Um, it says find the nth term for the power series f of x is e to the x, and that was one of the ones um, that was in the notes yesterday. So you might recall that when we did this, um, when we found the derivative, we were actually using zero, and we found that the, der the derivative of that was just e to the x repeatedly, and that when you plug in zero, you always get one. So when we wrote this, we were doing the Maclaurin series because it was centered at zero. And then the coefficient always happened to be 1. So this it gave us the polynomial 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial. And then as it continued on forever, it would be x to the n over n factorial. And that's you can kind of remember that polynomial. That was one of the like 
shortcut ones we said anytime you're looking at this function then this would be the polynomial that you could use to approximate some values for it so if we look at this one if you were to put parentheses around the x right here like i said this would have been a mclaurin series it's that specific example where in your parentheses you technically have x minus zero and so the center of this is zero and then for us to um, test for the radius and for the interval of convergence, we're going to go ahead and do the ratio test. And the ratio test will work on a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them. So for me to do the ratio test, I'm going to take this one down here, the one that represents the entire polynomial. So we're going to say that this polynomial is the same as this series. Actually, I guess that would be zero, starting at zero. So now instead of looking at this polynomial, I'm gonna look at the series and see where it converges. So I'm gonna do the ratio test, that's the limit. As n goes to infinity of x to the n plus one divided by n plus one factorial over x to the n over n factorial. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring the bottom up, bring the reciprocal up. So if I rewrite this one, that's x to the n times x to the one. And this, if I rewrite it, is n plus one times n factorial. And so then I can see that n factorial cancels with n factorial. And I can see that x to the n cancels with x to the n. And so I'm really finding the limit of x over n plus one. So as n goes to infinity, this limit is zero. Notice I'm not thinking of the infinity being plugged in for x. This says as n goes to infinity, so I'm just thinking about plugging infinity in for n. So the limit is zero, and if you guys recall, any time um, the answer to a ratio test is less than one, that series converges absolutely. So if this converges absolutely, that means for all x. For all of those x values, it doesn't matter what number you plug in, um, the series is going to converge. So that means that the radius of convergence is infinity. It always converges. And that means that the interval of convergence is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So if zero is the center of that, then negative infinity, so that's the left side of zero, positive infinity, that's the right side of zero, so it converges always. All right, um, example two is really four examples. So again, we're doing the same sort of thing, looking for the center, the radius, the interval of convergence. If you write real small, you might be able to fit it in this space. Um, I'm going to go ahead and write it on a separate sheet of paper again. So, example two, part A. This problem, they're not giving it um, to us written as a polynomial. They're just going to go ahead and give this problem to us written as a series. So if you look, you can see what the center is. It's five right there, so center is five. So you can always see it. It's whatever is being subtracted from the x um, in the parentheses. And then we're going to be finding the radius. We're going to be finding the interval. So again, this is pretty well set up for the ratio test. So I'm going to go ahead and do that.
So in the ratio test, we always have the plus one version on top. Any place we see an N on the bottom, we have the regular version. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by the reciprocal. Alright, and for this piece we can rewrite this as negative 1 to the n plus 1 times negative 1 to the 1. That's where n plus 2 came from. This one we can rewrite as x minus 5 to the n times x minus 5 to the 1. n plus 1 we can't rewrite as anything. Uh, 2 to the n plus 1 we can rewrite as 2 to the n times 2 to the 1. And then we can go ahead and see what cancels. So negative 1 to the n plus 1, x minus 5 to the n, 2 to the n, and then we'll go ahead and write our leftovers. So we're going to do the limit as n goes to infinity of, I have a negative 1 left on top, and an x minus 5. And then on the bottom, oh, and I also had an n on the top. And then on the bottom, I have an n plus 1 and a 2. All right, so we have to think about the limit as n goes to infinity. So we can see that these two n's are exactly the same size. The negative 1 doesn't really make a difference because of the absolute value. So these two n's are exactly the same size. The x minus 5 is the coefficient for that n. And the 2, if I had written it over here, the 2 is the coefficient for that n. So the limit, as n goes to infinity, since the n's are the same size, the limit would just be the coefficients of n. So the limit is this. So this is a more interesting case. This is not like before where we can just say, oh, that's a number, so it that's the number one half or that's the number zero or something so we know that it converges absolutely or say like ah that's five halves that's bigger than one so it um, diverges it's not one of those situations this one would converge but it depends on what the x value is so we know that if this fraction right here is less than one then whatever x values make this less than one is what would make it um, so that this converges so now we're going to go ahead and figure out what our interval of convergence is we're going to say x minus 5 over 2 is less than 1 is where it would converge. I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 2. So the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than 2. So anytime, this is where our center was, remember our center was at 5. So anytime we're within 2 of that, that's when we're going to have convergence. So our radius of convergence is 2. The center of convergence is 5, the radius of convergence is 2. So that means that our interval of convergence is between 3 and 7. So 2 down from 5, 2 up from 5. Now I have to test and see if you can converge at 3 and if you can converge at 7 because I don't know if I should say that these numbers are included or excluded. So that's the next thing we have to test for. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on the back side if you've got room. You can put it where you've got room. So I'm going to go ahead and check 3 first. So that means I'm just going to write out um, the series and I'm going to plug 3 in only for x. So this has nothing to do with what term I'm finding. This just, this just has to do with if I use that specific x value, then what happens to the series? Does it converge or diverge? So... Sorry. I can only search by topic for movies. Siri thought that I said Siri, not series. <laughs> so this is negative 1 to the n plus 1 times negative 2. So we've got negative 1 to the n plus 1 times negative 2 to the n, because 3 minus 5 is negative 2, over n times 2 to the n. And what I'm going to do so that I can simplify this is I'm going to say I'm going to split the negative apart from the 2. And I can do that as long as I give each of them the exponent that belonged here. So I'm going to say that this is negative 1 to the n power times 2 to the n power. 
So I'm rewriting this right here. So what that means is that my two to the n on top and my two to the n on bottom can cancel. And now that gives me the series negative one to the two n plus one because I'm multiplying the same base so I can add my exponents together over n. So if this exponent up here, it's 2n plus 1, you guys might recognize that's going to force that exponent to be odd every time. That means that this fraction is always going to have an odd number on the top. So this right here, always having, and it's actually always going to have negative 1 on the top. So this is negative 1 over n, which is a p series, where the p equals 1, it's the harmonic p series, and the harmonic p series diverges. So even though it looks like it would alternate, it does not alternate because the exponent will always be odd. So it's always going to be negative 1. So that means when we look at our notes, we can go back over here and this 3 should have a parenthesis. The 3 is not included in the interval. Alright, let's go ahead and check the 7. So we have negative 1 to the n plus 1, 7 minus 5 to the n. So when I write this one, then you'll notice that we have positive 2 to the n and positive 2 to the n, and those cancel. And we're left with a series negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n. So if you're looking at this, this, this is a harmonic p series again. We do have p equals 1. However, this is an alternating. So we can do the alternating series test on this just to see if even though it wouldn't converge absolutely, it might converge conditionally if it converges when the alternating sign is there. So if you guys recall, there's two conditions we need to check. One is that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n is 0. So we ignore the alternating part, and we just use the, the coefficient that would be there, which is a 1. And that's true. The limit is 0. And then the second condition is that 1 over n plus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over n. And when we look at that, that's true. So we know that the alternating series would converge. If it was always negative, then it wouldn't converge, it would diverge. But if it alternates, it actually does converge. And so that means that the 7 is included. So if we go back over here, our interval is from 3 to 7, excluding 3 and including 7. All right, for the next problem, um, if we want to figure out what the center is, we would say that this part right here would be like x over 3 minus 0. And so for this one, the center is 0. And then we are going to go ahead and figure out what the radius is and what the interval is. So if you look at this problem, you can recognize that this um, is a geometric series. And so that means that it converges if the r value is less than 1. And so I'm going to go ahead and just write these as notes down. So it's going to converge if the absolute value of x over 3 is less than 1. And so that's going to, I'll go ahead and multiply that 3 over. If the absolute value of x is less than 3, then it will converge. And so that means that the interval, um, or the radius of convergence is 3, and so the interval of convergence is from negative 3 to 3. And so just like before, we have to test the endpoints and see if those work. So I'm going to go ahead and check negative 3. So negative 3 over 3 to the n is going to be negative 1 to the n. Um, which will just be alternating between negative 1 and positive 1. And if you think about this one, that's kind of like the nth term test. Um, and so if I did the nth term test, I'd say the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the n, um, and it would alternate. It'd be plus or minus 1. 
And so the conclusion there is that it diverges. And then we would also, that means we're not including that one. Okay, so then we would also test um, positive three, so three over three to the n, that is just one to the n, and so again, if we do the nth term test, the limit as n goes to infinity of one to the n is just one, and since that is not zero, then our conclusion is that that one diverges as well. And so that means that our interval of convergence would not include either endpoint. Okay, um, let's go ahead and try this next one. So here, sorry, I gotta get my notes out, make sure I have everything. So here, um, if we think about what would have been in the parentheses with the x, um, just like before it would have been, just like this one, this one was x minus x over three minus zero, this one would have been x minus zero, which is why um, it didn't have any parentheses. And so we're gonna say the center here is zero. And then we also wanna find the radius and the interval. And so this one um, is kind of back to what we expect. It's a ratio test, which is pretty typical for these problems. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do the ratio test. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave out the negative one just because I know that that's not gonna do anything. So I'm gonna say the limit as n goes to infinity of x to the two times n plus one plus one over two times n plus one plus one factorial divided by x to the two n plus one over two n plus one factorial. All right, and then I'll go ahead and fix this. So that's the limit as n goes to infinity and I'm gonna fix it by doing keep it, change it, flip it. So this is x to the 2n plus 2 and then plus one more. So that'd be 2n plus 3 over 2n plus 3 factorial times, and if we flip the other one up, that'd be 2n plus 1 factorial over x to the 2n plus 1. Okay, so if I think about how these would cancel, um, this one I could say is x to the 2n plus 1 times x to the 2, and that would give me 2n plus 3. Um, and then, so that goes away, this would be 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 factorial. And so now if I go ahead and look to see what would cancel, these two would cancel, and then these two would cancel. And so what I'm gonna evaluate is the limit as n goes to infinity of x squared on the top over 2n plus three times 2n plus two. And if I evaluate that, since I'm um, thinking of the infinity as going in for the um, n's, not for the x's, and that's gonna be a limit of zero. And so that means um, that this converges absolutely. It doesn't matter what I plug in for x, it's always going to converge. So I'm gonna say converges absolutely. And so when I go back then, that means that the radius of the convergence would be infinity because all of the x's would work no matter what they are. And so the interval is from negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, and then one more. So this one, the center would be three. And we're gonna find the radius of convergence and we're gonna find the interval of convergence. Okay. So here I'm gonna go ahead and do the ratio test just like before. And so I'm gonna do the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus one factorial times x minus three to the n plus one divided by n factorial x minus three to the n. And so we can do um, 
I'm going to rewrite some things so we can do our canceling. So this one right here would be n plus 1 times n factorial. And then this one would be x minus 3 to the n times x minus 3 to the 1. And so if I cancel some things out, then I can see that the n factorials cancel and the x minus 3 to the n's, those cancel. And so this gives me the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 times x minus 3. And I could put that over 1 or not put that over 1. It doesn't really matter. But everything on the bottom canceled out. And so if I evaluate this with infinity, it would be infinity. And so this one's going to diverge. All right, but if we remember um, what we talked about on the at the very beginning of the video was that you have three different possibilities, and one of the possibilities is that you have the radius of infinity where every single x you plug in could converge. Um, the next possibility is that you have a radius of a number, and so only numbers in between there when plugged in for x would make a converging series. And your last option was one where um, this part would diverge, and so that means that only the center would converge. It's not possible here to have one that just doesn't converge at all, um, but it is possible for it to have a radius of zero and to say that there's not really an interval where it converges, that it only converges at one value and that that value is the center of convergence. And so here it would converge for one number and that's if you plugged in three. That's the only way it would possibly converge. Okay, and so just in general, I want to make sure that we're understanding what this interval of convergence really means. And the interval of convergence is just saying if you picked x values that are on that interval and you plugged them in for x, you just use them as a number, then we could trans, um, transform ourselves back to that last unit, you know, like go back in time and go back to the last unit we did and we could do a series test on it and it would converge using that number for x. So for this one, if I used... Um, if I used an x value of 2, and I did 2 over 3 to the n, and I went back to my last unit, and I said, does that converge? Does that series converge? You say, yes, it's geometric. That's 2 over 3. If I did um, negative 2 or negative 1, and we went back to last unit, you'd be like, yep, that converges. If I picked a value outside of the interval, like the number 5, and did 5 over 3, last unit, you would have looked at that, and you would have said, no, that does not converge. Okay, similar for this one, this one says no matter what the number is that I plug in for x, it's always going to converge. So here if I picked 900, we could go back to last unit, stick a 900 in there and do the testing on it and say does it converge and your conclusion would have been yes. So that's what we're doing when we find those intervals of convergence is we're saying we have a variable in the problem that we did not have last unit. And this unit, we're saying, what numbers could I plug in for that variable x that would allow us to go back to last unit and conclude, yes, that series did converge.